here we are again uh, another oh, week another dollar marty what uh, what have you got lined up for us this week then well we did water fire and earth so this is the last of the elements so this is air <laughs> air uh, air but how does air affect whiskey? It, 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 could, it, it couldn't possibly do anything to whiskey whatsoever. Well, Justin, it's an intrinsic part of the whole thing. Now, when I talk about air, uh, I, 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 there's a fair bit of this talks about oxygen. So it's a little bit of air, if you know what I mean. You, 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 you follow it up. You're a smart man, Justin. You're a smart man. Do you want to just say, Justin was the highest man in Northern Ireland at one point this week. <laughs> he doddered with a skim on his tail. <laughs> I, I can I can barely walk, Marty. It was tough. Uh, Sleeve Donard, if you don't know, is uh, just at the, the it's, it's the Queen of the Morns. It's the highest point in Northern Ireland, and it is pretty pretty darn hard slogged at the top of it. I can tell you that much. Well, so uh, uh, a number of years ago, me and me and. Uh, Three other guys started out. One guy, he hurt his knee, so he couldn't finish. Uh, we did the Morn Wall, which was 27 miles, if memory serves, over 15 mountains. Justin, I'm not joking. I would I'd rather be horsewhipped than <laughs> 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 right okay I, i'm with you i'm with you uh i mean we didn't even have, even have any whiskey with us to help us uh, uh, celebrate when we got to the top if you were to drink a whiskey when you celebrated at the top you know if we dumped the champagne what, what, what would we drink at the top of uh sleeve donard well you'd want something warming and but invigorating you know you'd want something you don't want something too light so you'd really go for a sort of a, a good double distilled Probably a Scotch, uh, quite a heavy bodied, maybe maybe something like um like an Ard Beg, or if you like peat it, and if you don't like peat it, you would want um maybe maybe a uh, Macallan, Macallan would be a good one. Um, why would you pick one of them then as as a celebratory drink? Because it's a it, it sort of warms you up. It's going to give you the the fire in your belly to get down again without the fire getting to your legs. A good, a good, robust, heavy body. You know, it's got a, a nice body to it. You know, okay. that, that, that's what I would recommend. So, go prepared the next time. Take whiskey with you. This is no, this is for your room. Next time, I'm going to go with a helicopter. That's what I'm going to go with the next time. That's what I'm going to go prepared with the next time. Uh, so welcome along if you've joined us tonight. Remember to comment, like, and share. And we and, and we really want people to look on uh, Facebook, don't we? Uh, but we want them to also subscribe and, and, and uh, YouTube as well because we're not too far away from the, the big numbers, Marty. No, we won't. See, the thing is, if you don't have 100 people, it's really hard for people to find you. You know, if you don't have the, the that contingent signed up to, to subscribe, you can't name the channel. And it's really hard for people. I know people on here who, who probably, I don't know, maybe have looked for it and can't really see it. It's because you don't have enough to start with. And as soon as we get the, the, the sort of green, the seed plant that we're flying, we don't want, you can go and buy these. You know, you can pay people in China to sign up for it. But what's the point? There's no point in doing that. We, what yep. we want to do, like do it real and we don't want to be paying people that don't actually care we want people to care you know and subscribing of course is free it doesn't cost that on youtube all you're doing is signing in there's ads but sure there's ads everywhere now you pay your car tax and there's loads of ads beside the road how does that work <laughs> but here we go tell us more about elements where are we heading first now we'll talk about air and i'm going to i i, I want to talk it, air, as we all know, is all around us. Now, I'm going to talk basically the way through the whole distillation process a bit, and uh, where air plays its part in this. And probably the most, one of the surprising bits is on grain delivery. When you're talking about tons of grain being delivered to a distillery, you, you get lots of dust coming off the grain when they pour it into the silos and stuff. And if, you, if you're taking tons of this, one of the big problems that you can have is dust explosions 
dust comes off the grain. So lots of distilleries actually need air extraction to, to, to take away the dust. So the dust gets in the air. It also, well, for health reasons, you might have to wear a mask. Now, this this currently seems yeah. to be a major <laughs> issue. Who knew there were so many people had terrible, terrible <laughs> aversion to wearing a mask for about 10 minutes while you go to the shop? But anyway, so in distilleries, you need to have um, take a real care because dust explosions when you have extremely flammable liquid beside you, this is something that has to be taken into account. I've got a picture of somebody that, that, that didn't wear a mask. There you go. There they are there. <laughs> hanging over hanging over their, their, their gravestone. That <laughs> graphic was for a bit later on. <laughs> I, know, I know. I couldn't resist that. I couldn't resist that when you said that. I couldn't resist it. So that, that's that's probably something that most people wouldn't think of. If you, you take it, if you want to make uh, 10,000 litres of wort, now wort is the sugary liquid before it becomes beer. It's what gets fermented. If you want to make 10,000 litres of that, which is a huge amount, but it's not, it's a large distillery, you need about 2,000 2, kilos, two tonnes of grain to make that. And when you're doing that, that creates a lot of dust. So if that sparks, suddenly it goes up and, you're, and you know, you can cause real problems with this, you know. So that's one element of, of air. Now, once you make that sugary wort, you, know, you take your malt and you mix it up with water and, you, and you, you know, you turn it into your grist, you know, you mill it down, you mix it with water uh, and you get this sugary substance. Then you put in your yeast, Okay. Now, yeast need a number of things. They need they need um, energy, uh, and they need oxygen during their, their growth phase. Now, mainly when you're wort, certainly when you're making whiskey, it's talking about glucose. So you take the glucose sugar to turn into your alcohol. Now, luckily, as a handy demonstration and a wee product placement. <laughs> <laughs> now, we have not been sponsored by this thing, but this is glucose. I'm going to be like a yeast cell. So, I mean, if Daley Thompson had have been there on the Antrim coast today, he would have been sponsored by Lucas Aid, but of course, we had Sir Mo Farah here today. Mo Farah, Mo, Mo Farah, Mo Farah. Up round, not too far away. I was going to go and watch him, Justin, but I couldn't really be bothered, if I'm totally honest. Because it was very early in the morning, I know that, yeah. It was very early in the morning, and it was threatening and the rain. So I decided, Mo, and Mo would have went by me, and then I'd have been left looking at lots of uh, very badly out-of-breath farmers <laughs> coming by. <behind them>, you know? <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, what, what, what are we waiting for? Are we waiting for fram fermentation to arrive? Gosh, that look as he looks good. It's full fat. Look as he I only drink look as he zero now, you see. Indeed. We see, then you've been, you've been no use to you couldn't ferment anything then, Justin, because you wouldn't be any good as a yeast cell. Okay, no, now the graphic you've put up there the blue line is the oxygen in in the ward. Now, you can see where all the different um phases are in this. Now, yeast's a very, very it's well, it's kind of amazing. <laughs> Doesn't it needs oxygen to grow, but it's not actually for respiration. It needs it actually for biosynthesis synthesis synthesis to make actually I can nearly say that. Uh, to make the cell walls. So you see there where it's suddenly the exponential phase there where it drops down really, really quickly. That's because the yeast starts multiplying and it sucks the oxygen out of the, the wort. Now the oxygen sits in the liquid, dissolved. Now, people get slightly confused sometimes what that actually means. When I open this tin of Lucasade, you see that the carbon dioxide in this starts to bubble. The carbon dioxide is actually still in gas form inside the liquid. It just needs a little anchor to all come together to bubble out. And it's the same with the oxygen. 
when the oxygen is being used up in the ward, it's it's used to build cell walls. The, the, the yeast doesn't actually breathe it and breathe it in and out the way we sort of conceptualise it. So when the yeast is eating the glucose, it makes a number of different things. It makes alcohol. For every glucose molecule, it makes two molecules of alcohol or ethanol. Um, it makes carbon dioxide. It, it heats uh, and it, it creates biomass as well. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So it has these properties. Basically, it eats sugar, pees out alcohol, and farts out carbon dioxide. That's about as good as I can sort of make it for you, probably, you know. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Listen, uh, I've got to I've got to run through some of these comments because they're coming in thick and fast tonight. We're ten minutes on the ready. We're talking about uh, elements. It's our final in our elements uh, series. We're talking about uh, air and its role in whiskey production. Now, uh, who's been in touch tonight already? Uh, Michael Matthews is saying, "Are we going to be talking about hot air?" Not the, there's always lots of hot air talk in this show, I can assure you. <laughs> and we're, we're getting the big wahoo uh, rather than the yahoo uh, from Mark Kerr. Uh, Patrick Mulkey's uh, saying hello. Uh, good evening hello. to you. And remember, if you have any intelligence questions, it doesn't matter whether they're intelligent or not, ask away. We like them. Uh, <laughs> uh, Euro Price is telling us he's having a wee Irish peated single malt. Uh, bottoms up to you too. Um, and Mark Kerr saying, well, John Justin nearly killed me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> did I nearly kill you? Oh, no, no. Sleeve Donard nearly killed you. You look you look fitter than me, Mark. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, there's uh, a recommendation for the Mourns. Uh, oh. you've, you've recommended this one before. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Kalila. Kalila's great stuff too. My, I'm a great fan of Kalila. It's lovely. All right. Julie Mason's saying hello as well. Uh, she's saying even to you, Julie, as well. Uh, have you ever managed to get top morns, uh, Julie? Uh, 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 Marty enjoys the morns very much. Let me see. Uh, Andrew McAllister uh, ha had a very nice tasting at Glengoyne Distillery on Thursday. Indeed, it's nice. It's nice to get out and about, you know. Uh, these places are opening up and uh, good. I hope, I hope there's so many places. I mean, me and you both know the tourism industry is basically kaput this year. So people need to go their own, go be a local tourist, you know. They do. Um, they do. Uh, there's a new one at the shed. Let me see. We'll get we'll get through these because we're, we're we're nearly a quarter of the way in. Have to say on, on the summit, I shared a bottle of porter aged in Dunville Cass. Okay, there you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Yo Price is saying hello to Mervin. These people mustn't have WhatsApp. Uh, Yo <laughs> Price is saying hello to Sir Conley. No, always comment, like, and share. Tag the people properly, and that way they know to watch the show. Uh, Mark Kerr was laughing at her crad angel, but we'll we'll go into angels later on because the angels always get to drink some of the whiskey. Mm. Uh, and uh, Murray, how are you looking so young? It's it's the alcohol consumption. There we go. <laughs> uh, Sir Conley saying hello to Yo Price. Uh, Mark Kerr is saying, "Is look as he had not an oxymoron. Look as he had zero. Yes, it is. Um, a glass of bubbly. Then I should have brought a glass of bubbly, uh, Sherman. I should have. I should have. Uh, just for the end, Sherman was one of the guys that did the morn wall with me, and at the end of it, he was so happy and elated to be finished. <laughs> I thought he was going to die a few times. Another guy that was with us." He almost died, did die, at which point Sherman says, if you fall down once more, we're abandoning you. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's terrible, terrible, terrible. Uh, J. Paul Rodden said, evening, la lads. Is excess CO2 an issue with fermenters as in health and safety? It most certainly is, yes. CO2, as you know, is heavier than air. So if you're in a large distillery that's not ventilated, what can happen is the, the, the CO2 can come out. It's odourless and colourless, obviously. So if it builds up too high, it's heavier than air, so it comes down and, and builds up. 
and you, you, you do have to take care because it will make people go unconscious and if they go unconscious all you have to do really quick if you do it quick enough is get them to a, a summer that's ventilated and they'll be fine but it is when when people are designing distilleries they have to take all of this kind of thing into consideration because if you had a confined space with a, a you know with a different your fermentation tank sitting there and this comes out you know suddenly the guy goes unconscious well, he, he can't get himself out so someone else has to so all of this stuff has to be taken into consideration um yeah so it, it can it can be a problem absolutely well it's it certainly is. That's a very good question. We do like questions. Uh, yeah. Remember, if you tap them in, we can bring them on screen. And uh, Marty, you, you really want people to go and look at YouTube because we're still trying to make this 100. And, and, and the promise is still on for a very special gift, isn't it? Oh, yes. Yes. You get to spend a night with Justin. <laughs> 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 in in the morns, in the morns, in the sleeve in the sleeve donard hotel, in the bridal suite. Um, <laughs> there you go. No, you don't. You, you, you're gonna you're gonna win a miniature. A miniature is what you're gonna win. Uh, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna just say uh, there's lots and lots of different types of yeast. Okay, uh, the one that most distilleries use. There's a few different yeasts that can be used uh, is brewer's yeast which is kind of a specific one now, the reason they use it well one of the reasons they use it is it's very stable and all and so on and so forth it's a very sort of predictable outcome for what you're going to get in many ways but the the breed of yeast that they use it actually enables this thing called the crab tree effect which is a very weird thing where they don't actually need oxygen to do stuff, to do what they do, if there's a, a high enough glucose, sugar rich environment. So once they use up the oxygen, they can not breathe, they don't, they don't breathe it anyway, but not use it. Um, it's, it's, a very, it's a very weird evolutionary quirk it's named after a man called Herbert Crabtree, which he, he observed that this process was happening in, in actually in cancer tumours. Um, but this is what happens. That's why when the oxygen depletes, fermentation really goes through the roof because there's loads of yeast has bred from the sugar with the oxygen and then they just munch through the sugar. So when you've seen that chart earlier on, you see the oxygen going down and then the ferment, as it goes down, fermentation flies up and stays there. And then as the yeast runs out of food, it all starts to die off and the fermentation ends. So it, it's a very predictable pattern, but it's extremely complex. You know, it, yeast is an amazing thing. It's absolutely incredible what, what it's capable of doing. I mean, Anything that can turn sugar into alcohol, yeah, that's a good. That's a good thing. It, it, it's pretty. It's pretty impressive stuff. So that, that's so, the fermentation process. Uh, so the the air leaves it then. The air is gone from it then. The oxygen is out of the wort. Okay, but it's now been converted into a, a beer. That's essentially what they think. And some beer makers actually pump oxygen through the wort to help the yeast grow, essentially. So some of them do that, some of them don't. It all depends on what, what way they want to do it. Now, coming to the distilling, um, Grant's uh, created at the Girvan Distillery, and I think you have a photograph there of a big still, I think it's sitting outside. They come up with a process called vacuum distilling, where they remove the air from the still and do the distilling inside that. Now, there's a couple of reasons why. When you take away the, the, the pressure, the air pressure, if you like, it means you don't have to heat it as much. 
to get the distillation going, which saves cost. You don't have to put as much energy in, it saves money. But more importantly for, for the distillery, grants, uh, it doesn't create the sulfur compounds that some, sometimes comes along with the distilling. And they say it's got a, a, a sweeter flavor because it's not heated as much. So they actually, to, to, to sort of capitalize on that, they brought out a bottle called Oxygen. So Grant's Oxygen Bottle. And this was a distillery or a airport exclusive. But they, they brought that out. And this is this new technique. Now these days, Everybody wants to to make uh, these energy savings. I mean, it's important. Now, whenever I talked about the CO2 earlier on, everybody wants to cut down on their CO2. But in distilling, you're really not making CO2. It's actually just part of the process. It's a, it's a sort of net CO2. It's a bit like um, if you get a tree... It grows, etc., etc. Cap carbon captures when it dies. It's it, it's not taking away anything. It's just sort of storing it for future for, for future release. So it's not seen as a net contribution. So anybody who think anybody who wants to please Greta Thunberg uh, and not drink whiskey, this is no, you're not you're not, you're not helping the planet. Stop and drinking whiskey, just so everybody knows. Um, and I know these days this is vitally important. So, so why did why did nobody uh, copy grants and come up with their own uh, sort of vacuum still to make oxygen bottles? Some of them do. Um, there are other distilleries now that have done it, but this is a fairly recent invention, if you like. Um, other distilleries have been doing this, but it's just it's not really something that people appreciate, if you like. Um, they don't necessarily need to know. So. Some of the grain distilleries are, are doing this, but it's a fairly innovative new technique. And everybody's trying to see of energy, see of energy, see of money, uh, et cetera, et cetera. They, th they, they say that it, it helps the whiskey as well. So that's another point. Right. Nope. You can say something. I, I thought we were going to get flared there because somebody says, we love Greta. Oh, everybody should love St. Greta. Don't worry. No. <laughs> good honor. She's doing a great job there trying to save the world. Good good for me, Greg. All right. You know? I, I'd much prefer uh, a Tesla. A Tesla? I know a guy who's just bought a Tesla. Um and he yeah. And and he says it's the it's the all power drive one. Uh not the sixty in three seconds. Wow. He's well pleased with it. So uh, I said to him, I'll have to come down and have a wee spin on it some one of these days. So he said, no problem. Okay, that's 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 that sounds good. I I feel a road I feel a road trip right in Scottish <laughs> distillery coming on. <laughs> if, if we if we get it logoed up the side, you know, Alan would give us one free, you know. But unfortunately, oh. we, we 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 don't qualify. Right. There you go. So we're talking about air tonight uh, in our final of the elements series. Uh, I want you to comment, like, and share. Get involved. Some great questions coming in tonight. Uh, okay. and we're, go we're going to go to one of them in about five minutes. But where are we going to head to now? Uh, no. no. We're going to head to after it's distilled, it goes in the cask. And this is probably the main thing that people would Think about whenever they really think about air and whiskey and all that kind of stuff. The angels share. Okay. What the angels share is, is the evaporation of liquid from a cask. Now, I'm saying liquid because it's, it's an extremely complicated process. Okay. Um, it, up until, well, fairly recently people who made whiskey didn't necessarily appreciate what was happening and what they thought was yeah they probably had a fair idea but what they thought was the angels are taxing whiskey essentially that the whiskey is coming out of the barrel i say whiskey it could be rum or any of these spirits coming out of the barrel and heading to the heavens 
So the angels are getting their share. Um, from the the graphic you showed earlier on of the angel over the grave, that's that's the angel with the hangover. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. The morning, the, the morning after. But what what happens is it's actually a really really complicated process because it depends on a number of factors. One, the cask, what the cask's made of. I I was on a tour of a distillery one time when. Uh, the, the girl who was doing the guiding basically said it's from little holes in the the, the, the barrel, the cask. Well, it's not really, because if there's a hole in the cask, the, the water will come out. It actually seeps through the wood and comes out of, you know, it, it, it comes out of the cask. Now, it depends on heat and humidity. And it can range from about 1% loss per annum all the way up to, if you go to India, now you'll see here, this uh, that you show, this is about uh, humidities and percentage losses depending on heat and, humi and, and humidity. And you can see there that it can go right the way up to about 16%. Per annum. Now, I thought earlier on I will do da -da 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 -da, a graphic representation of what that means. Okay? So, you see here, this is a full cask. So, say this is 200 litres. Okay? Year one, you're going to loss, it goes down to 168 litres. Okay? This is at 16%. So, you've lost. Uh, 32 litres in one year. Year two, you're down to 141. Year three, sorry. Year four, you're down to 118 litres. And in year five, you're now down to less than 100 litres. You've halved in five years. So this is losing 16% per annum. So you, do, you, you think about that. The cost of making that stuff and in five years you've dropped down to half of what you had now in ireland around here you'll only be losing about two percent i say only but you compound that over a number of years it, it, it soon starts to add up but this is this is amrit 10. amrit 10 is a 10-year-old Indian whiskey. Now, people automatically think, and, and this is wrong, you automatically think that, oh, it's Indian whiskey, it can't be very good quality. It's actually it's actually well regarded as it's quite good. But 10 years old is the oldest Indian whiskey sold because the humidity sucks it out essentially it, it takes away from the cask because you'll there never otherwise see lo lo lose a so much 25 year old indian whiskey unless they stick it at the top of one of the himalayas you know on top of one of the mountains and they, you'll not see it because the humidity is so high and heat is so hot that the angels take the shell now this is called greedy angels 10 year old peated rum finished a bottle of this when it was first brought out cost about five to six hundred pounds so you can imagine there's not an awful lot of this conversely in scotland you go to mccallan and mccallan were able to bring out a 72 year old whiskey now the reason being it's bloody freezing in scotland and the humidity is quite low and so because there's not much heat. Now, a bottle of that, you can only buy it at auction these days. That's going to set you back £60,000, maybe, maybe thereabouts. Um, comes in a leak glass uh, bottle, hand cut, etc., etc. And I think you, well, you can see that the presentation of it's quite nice. But that's the difference. That's how important the angel share is. Now, 
Martín. So, Marty, tell us about this team from the university in Cuba that uh, studied all of this then. Well, what they did was they went to, they, they, they sat down, they were primarily um, concerned about rum, uh, which is aged pretty much the same, but they wanted to find out what the mechanics of the whole thing was, why, how you, you lost so much, et cetera, et cetera. And they find out it's actually much more complicated than just losing alcohol. Like, now it's been known for, for a long time that certain places that it's actually the water that goes out quicker than the alcohol. And in other places, it's the alcohol that comes out quicker than the water. It just depends on conditions. But there's also all the other flavour compounds. Some of those evaporate. So Diageo, um, a few years ago, in 2015, uh, well, this is, this is the formula that the team from Cuba came up with to give the volume loss of from the angel share. This is like an angel share formula. It's That's quite com incredibly complicated looking. Yeah, um, it's incredibly complicated, the, the, the maths behind it. And the theory behind it. So, as I say, this is this is how com complex all of this is, and this is even only an approximation because there's so many factors at work that it becomes really, really almost impossible to know exactly what you're going to lose. So it's only ever going to be a, a, a very, very good guesstimate, really. But the ISO in 2015. Uh, helped fund work at Napier University in Edinburgh to try and come up with a cask that didn't let out as much of the angel's share. I'm not 100% sure where they, they did develop one, but I don't think it's going to work. If I'm totally Maybe right. it's a trade secret, Marty, and they, they, they don't want you... To, to, to be privy to it because you know everybody would want this then and uh i would i would argue that probably lots of people won't because the oxygen that's in the the cask it plays its part as well it's reacting the oxygen's a very reactive element as most people would know so it's playing its part with all the congeners the the, the different chemicals that are in there that give whiskey its flavour. And if you inhibit that, if you prevent that from doing that, well, I, I, it would be interesting to find out just what's happening. The thing is, lots of the chemicals that are in there, as I say, all the esters and, and aldehydes and all these different chemicals that are there, they react with oxygen to, to form more complex flavours. So if you inhibit that, and stop that loss, then it might change the whole chemistry of the whole thing and, and maybe might be detrimental to, to the whiskey. But it would be interesting to find out. Would it still be whiskey or would it be a different product then? See, this is the thing. It has to, the cask has to be uh, all wood. You can't use nails to hold it together. You can't glue it. You can't, you know, you can't, you couldn't okay. sil silicone up the, 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 the you know, wrap it in silicone. Yeah. Um, is that that wouldn't be allowed? But the you apparently have tried wrapping them in plastic, um, and stuff. I, I don't know. I just I, I think it would mess with the, with the very very complex chemistry that's going on. It'd probably not and be detrimental to the flavour. I might be wrong, and I'm up for being proven wrong, but I think it probably would. So a bit, of, well, we're going to give some people a mention here tonight that are tuned in. Taylor Jones, good evening to you. Nick Rand, good evening to you. Tim Mulcair, good evening to you. Dale McDonald, good evening to you. And remember, if you come at Light and Shirt, you can get involved. Like uh, some of these people have a really great questions coming in tonight, uh, and they're actually highly complimentary of the Indian, uh, which you, you obviously. Yeah. You, you know, you have it sitting there on the table to 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 my right, your left, and mm -hmm. it, it's it's good stuff. Like Frank Hearn is saying, he was in India 
in 2013, took a bottle of Black Bush with me. End of trip, we were drinking Amrut, rather tasty. Yes, and, and, and it, is, it seems to be, people have this idea that you can only make whiskey in Ireland, Scotland, uh, and bourbons in America. It's just not true. There's lots and lots of really good distilleries popping up all over the world, and and there's so, even some popping up in England, which are getting great reviews, uh, new ones. And also, India is a big drinker of whiskey too. India is the largest consum consumers of whiskey in the world by an absolute country mile. Um, people would automatically think the biggest whiskey drinking nation would be the US. It's not anywhere close. I mean, India, you have to remember, India, basically one in six people in the world is Indian. And lots of them drink lots and lots of whiskey. Whiskey's their preferred drink. Now, to be fair, most of it's made in India for the Indian market. Lots of Indian guys couldn't afford, you know, expensive Macallans and stuff. It's just, unfortunately, they, they haven't, their economy's not at that point yet. But they make fantastic Hamlet's really good, and they make um, good there, stuff. You know? There's Mark Kerr saying the same thing. He love Amrit. Uh, and he's also saying that a 50-year-old barrel is ne nearly an empty one. Absolutely. I mean, you, you think of it. If you, if you Compounding is a very, a very hard to do in your head. But if you take it that you're losing 2% every year, boom, 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 that adds up really considerably really you know really quickly and at, and at 50 years old you, i mean once it drops below 40 percent alcohol it's no longer whiskey you can't sell it as a whiskey so lots of these barrels have to be stored in a very special specific area to try and minimize how much they're losing because if they get down to 41 percent suddenly you nip out and and you've lost You've lost your uh, whiskey, and I mean, you'll have lost an absolute fortune. Picture you've just put up that's down in Jameson, down in the Jameson warehouses. Each of these warehouses contain, they're divided in half for fire reasons. I mean, obviously, if that goes in fire, it's a, it's a massive conflagration. Each of these warehouses hold 32,000 barrels, but they're split in two, so there's sort of 16,000 in each barrel. How much? Whiskey, do you how many bottles a day do you think Jameson loss, Justin and Angel share? How many, many bottles a day do you think they lost? 10,000, um, nearly 40. Wow, 40,000 bottles a day goes into the air. Now, you think of that, that's Jameson. Think about what it's like in Scotland, they're losing hundreds of thousands of bottles every single day just disappear into the ether. Now, a barrel of whiskey is not a cheap commodity and thousands of them just disappear into the air. So it's an important factor. People, you know, but people sort of say about the, the angel's share and the, uh, if you go on a distillery tour, it's almost taken as a bit of a, a bit of a joke, something funny, but it's actually a really significant loss to a distillery in terms of volume. Um, and I, I did a quick look to see what the oldest whiskey I had was. And it was I actually found out that it's actually this 26-year-old single malt, Irish single malt. Um, I, have a, I have a few 21-year-olds, but the 26 is actually the oldest one I have. P people have been asking questions to do with duration uh, in this, uh, not not necessarily age, but f f uh, fermentation is a buzzword now. Are long fermentations better? Not necessarily. Um, <laughs> there's long fermentation. It there's lots of factors as to why it would be long fermentation. Um, for example, you, you 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 could keep the thing chilled a bit, try and inhibit what, the amount of yeast that grows. Um, don't put too much oxygen in it. If you put too much oxygen in it, you, the, the the yeasts can start to turn the alcohol to vinegar and stuff. There's lots of very complicated chemistry that I don't particularly understand a huge amount about. But you are talking 
lung fermentation uh, probably it depends what you want to do um, there's lots of factors involved um, some people just want again it comes down sometimes it just comes down to cost you know you can have the longer you have something sitting the more, more it's going to cost you you know yeah uh, c- c- certain, certainly that would be the case. I mean, it's so it, it can it can sit in the fermentation and cost you, and sit in the storage warehouses and cost you. And it all costs money, and um, you could have a beer. In, ter- in, in terms, of, I mean, lots of fermentation, long fermentations are done now for beers, these craft beers. But when you go to buy a craft beer, and you're paying four pound for a bottle of it, there's a reason you're paying four pound a bottle for it, and all of that adds into the cost of whiskies as well. It's exactly the same process, except with whiskey, you have to then barrel age it and all of that costs. And every t- every year it sits there, it's costing you money. So in terms of taste, it probably works well for some, probably not as well for others. Yeah, some great questions coming in tonight. Uh, is, is there a big difference with the material container vessel used in the fermentation takes place? Because you said it has to be wood, but different types of wood, di- different finishes, different. No, no not for not for fermentation. Um, for, for for fermentation, lots of them use stainless steel. Um, for for cask aging, for aging whiskey, it has to be in Scotland. It has to be oak casks. Um, yes. For um. There are a number of different theories on this. Um, some say you should have uh, wooden fermentation vessels, you know. Um, but it's it's again people people have different ideas of what way to do these. Um, so it's 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 tricky to know. Just exactly what happens a lot of the time because it's not been studied on a, on a scientific level, and that's just uh, the, the so long and the short of it. You seen how complex it was just to say that the, the angels share. <laughs> well, well it, it is. I mean, the angels share. I mean, there, there's a full there's a full breakdown of it here. This is unbelievable. This, yeah. So this is <laughs> this is uh, temperatures, humidities, and losses. You know, so I mean, this that's, this is a chart. Depicting what these are, um, and that's that's how complex it is. Um, as I say, it's all of it is quite complicated, you know. Okay, so we've only got fifteen minutes left. I believe it or not, Marty, I, I can't believe how fast it goes. Uh, yeah, it just seems to go quicker every week. There's a lot of questions here still to cover. Uh, we're being asked the one to do with the decanting. Is it worth allowing whiskey? to decant uh, and you said you said no to this before don't decant it because if it sits it oxygenates right rises oxidizing this is a very sort of controversial topic and i fold up my arms for a reason because it's, it's like uh, i don't know what i say here i personally when i pour out a quality whiskey and i'll pour out an arm right here just to improve uh, my point it improves sitting in a glass for a period of time. Okay, you pour out, and if you leave it sitting, it, <laughs> I'm sorry, but it does improve. However, there are lots and lots and lots of people, many who have studied this in great depth, who say it doesn't. Um, who say whiskey doesn't oxygenate. It's sat for in this case, 26 years in in a cask with oxygen. So pouring it in from a bottle and a glass for 10 minutes isn't going to make a huge difference. But it does. If you pour out a glass an hour ago in one night and do a, t- do a taste comparison, there's a difference. Um, I, I, absolutely. If you left, if, if whiskey doesn't oxid, oxidize, why if I set that out there now and leave it until tomorrow morning, 
then come down and try it tomorrow morning, it'll, it'll be, it'll taste an awful lot worse than it does now. So, yep. I don't, there's I Connor Ryan agreeing with you. He's he's agreeing with you. Listen, we've only got about 15 minutes left tonight. I, I want to run through some of these uh, mentions again. Uh, J. P. Roden is asking, does a bigger angel shirt mean faster aging in the barrel? No, not necessarily. Um, it, it depends on the cask. There's lots and lots of really complicated chemistry going on in, in barrel aging. It's, uh, it, it sounds... Bit twee to say it's not really understood. It's still a bit sort of a mystery. What exactly all's going on? Um, over time, there's more reactions going on. So the, the, the as the liquid goes down, it depends on lots and lots of factors, and most of them, most people, most of them are totally not understood by science or pretty much anybody else. So, so the answer is. Um, doesn't mean faster aging it just means it's evaporating quicker and um, we'll get another uh, question again the story of uh, the linea aquavat barrels makes for an interesting read read breathing heat and humidity is that yeah you see there's lots of factors involved as i say if you go online you can find that the study by the cuban uh, university and they they do the whole thing there's there's lots and lots of factors involved with barrel aging um, and angel share. And as I say, it's a very sort of throwaway remark when you do a tour, but it's actually a really important aspect of the whole distillery, distilling and distillery process set up. So, yeah, go and find out. Um, yeah, it's fantastic, fantastic reading. Okay, and let me see. Uh, Mark saying, I've fallen asleep after a session. The glass of whiskey sitting on the table doesn't taste nice. Mind you, my head and, and tongue are shot at that point. Yes, if your taste buds have gone funny, you might have COVID-19. Dial 111 <laughs> and get tested. <laughs> yeah, Bill. <laughs> oh, we'll, 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 we'll be, we'll be, we'll be, in, we'll, we'll be cut off by the thought police for mentioning COVID nineteen next. What do you see? Um, uh, let me see uh, what else this was saying. Uh, Michael Matthews is saying he's vi visited Tullamore, and mm -hmm. and they have just built another five massive warehouses that add to the seven they already have there. Everybody's doing this, Marty, because they can't keep up with the popularity of whiskey, and, and it's our fault. <laughs> Don't blame me. I'm, I, we're creating employment here, Justin. We're the, the, war. the builders of Tottenham War should be thanking us. But I'll give you an idea. Um, if memory serves, I think Jameson have 32,000 barrels per warehouse. I think they have 25 of those on site and at least twice that off site. That's how much whiskey they have in store. So, and they're, they're big, but in, so, in terms of in comparison to some of the big Scottish ones, they're not that big. You know, it's it's incredible. It's incredible. Right. Okay. Uh, let me see. Your price is agreeing with Mark. He's saying, uh, I agree, but I'm talking about the nice crystal decanter with a stopper, like a display. Does the whiskey lose its value to speak over time if in a decanter? Of course, because you can't prove what bottle it's come from. Even I know the answer to that one. It could be brown colored water. It could be brown lemonade. You could be making a movie. Right. But Justin, see what they do now. They just revealed there the other day. Um, a university has discovered a way of putting a laser through a bottle of whiskey to tell you what's in it. So if you if you have a bottle of seventy two year old Macallan, and um, you have drunk the seventy two year old Macallan and filled it with, I don't know, something awful, like where's my bottle? Where's my bottle of proper twelve? Anyway, if you fill it with cheap nasty whiskey, um, they can beam a laser through it and tell you that's that's not a seventy two year old Macallan. That's detergent or proper twelve pretty much the same thing um so so don't you be trying to be sneaky and defraud people of uh valuable whiskey no so i can't tell you what it is i'm just smelling this amber there's a lovely almond note off that beautiful really really nice really nice 
What's the what's the secret to the Amrit's uh, product then, Marty? Just quality. Just me. It's just a quality product. Um, it's the same. It's the same as any quality product, Justin. If if care and attention and a bit of craft's put into it, it's not going to be nice, you know. And it's like it's really nice. Amrit's lovely. Okay, we've got about 10 minutes left. If you want to say anything to Murray or me about Elements and Air, ask any questions. Now is the time to do so because we're on the homeward straight, uh, so to speak, tonight. Uh, you know, uh, people are saying things like, you know, what a waste with the evaporation and stuff like that there. It, but, you know, it's 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 one of those things. It's, it's the way it has to be done. Uh, do you think that science will ever overcome that and they'll, they'll be able to cheat the angels maybe not a good idea but but but, but like maybe trying to cheat cheat the cheat the leprechauns justin do you not think 2020 has been bad enough <laughs> it's like armageddon no, <laughs> it, it, ha it hasn't got worse give it time there's three and a half months left i know i know with, with, with any with any luck christmas might be cancelled <laughs> with mushroom clouds over beirut which is never really a good thing let's be honest uh, the whole pandemic. I, I mean, the whole thing. Just um, so hopefully the asteroid that's coming the skips. <laughs> but no, <laughs> as you're saying there about science overcoming the uh, the angel share, I personally think the angel shares are really vitally important part of the whole thing because there's there's chemistry going on there that we don't understand. Nobody has really studied it, and it's probably quite tricky to understand but you do know that when something has reached a certain age that it does taste better um that's not that doesn't count in all counts um you know there's 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 plenty of good whiskies at, at 12 years old that the 20 year old's not much better and certainly not you know it's maybe slightly worse in some instances but that's but the chemistry of it is really important so the barrel aging, uh, the, the, taking away that angel share aspect of it, hmm, I, I would, I would, I would think it's a bit of a folly, to be honest. Um, I think it's all part of the craft of it. You know, you, there's a reason you do it. You know, we're, we're getting really, uh, you know, thinking out of the box here. If you aged it in plastic barrels, it wouldn't change the product. Uh. If you age, if you age it in plastic barrels, it, 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 you basically just end up with you have the same thing that you've just distilled. It'll be a clear new make spirit. It just wouldn't change. So it's not getting, it's not getting the the leakage or the the, the, the evaporation. You know the the seepage out, and then getting to mix with the wood and pull the vanilla and stuff out of the wood and giving it that flavour. So the, the angel shares a vitally important part of it. You know. And uh, Frank saying at the Amrit uh, we uh, got in India uh, was thirty five quid, uh, and well, he 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 rated. It. We're, uh, we're we're getting a lot of endorsements from the Amrit. It sounds sounds like a lot of people have tried this. It's really, really, really good. Absolutely. Um, I mean, this one here, this is what one is it? Um, that's that's just a single malt, um, and that's it's got a lovely. Um, and there's a wee minty flavour to it, like a menthol thing coming off it. I mean, it's lovely. It's really, really good. Now, I want to just touch a little bit before we go on a, a, an important other part for distillery to do with oxygen this time. And it's to do with when you, you, you make whiskey, you do have byproducts on waste. And you have to get rid of these. And one of the things that they have to take into consideration is where you get rid of it. Now, one of the things that they have to comply with in terms of environmental laws is the the chemical oxygen demand of the the, the waste products. And what they mean by that is the stuff that's coming out is, is is a natural product, obviously. But if it was to enter the water stream. It needs oxygen to decay. And if it goes into the water stream, it sucks the oxygen out and kills fish. It doesn't poison fish. This is sometimes a bit of a common misconception. When you put a 
a, a biological product into the water, what happens is it sucks the oxygen out and basically suffocates the fish. So what they can do sometimes is put it out in small bits where it's not going to use up all the oxygen in the rivers, and et cetera, et cetera. So some of them put it out there. Big, large distilleries, that's not an option. Um, so they have to send it away for treatment. But lots of them now have discovered that the whiskey, they can actually put them into anaerobic digesters. So instead of putting it in where it takes the oxygen out of the water, they're actually using them in digesters to let anaerobic bacteria eat them to produce uh, methane, essentially, and heat the distillery. See, see how clever people are. Yeah, that's very environmentally friendly, especially in Scotland where it would be cold and you might need it heated. But you wouldn't need it heated in India or places like Tel Aviv. Andrew McAllister said, you spoke of whiskey from afar. I recently got a bottle from the Milk and Honey Distillery in Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv. They, they, they started making this about two or three years ago. Um, and uh, Milk and Honey Distillery. They actually have three distilleries now in Israel. And, uh, well, good like us. <laughs> Jewish people do have a tendency to do things very well. So, you know, you, th you think a quarter of all Nobel Prizes have been won by Jewish people, so I imagine <laughs> they'll do whiskey making very well too, you know. Okay, yes, uh, that's uh, a good point. Uh, let me see what else people are saying tonight. We've got about a couple of minutes left because we like to keep it under an hour because you can't share more than an hour on uh, some online platforms. So uh, make sure you go to our YouTube channel. Uh, it's 85 likes now or subscribers now. We need to get to the 100. Marty, what do you have for the 100 subscriber? I have a, I'll have a miniature of something something very special. Is it look as it? Yes. <laughs> no, it's it's not. It is, it is something. It is something nice. Uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna we're gonna give your last few of the comments tonight. Uh, love the show, lads. I'm spreading the good word on Twitter. Thank you very much for that. Um, tag me if you can uh, at Justin McCartney on Twitter uh and uh, ushki tours on uh twitter as well for murray uh well done lads another great show your price saying hello alan uh love the show if they're coming in a big flurry at the end murray i can't keep up with them you see because they, they all go flurry i'm just going to say tomorrow in the sunday life i review two stacks two stacks blend up whiskey i review it tomorrow Okay. <laughs> it's not a miniature of Marty's Infinity Bottle. No, it's not. It is. It'll be sealed. It'll be sealed. It'll be sealed. We wouldn't do that to you. Now, let me see uh, what people are saying here tonight. Uh, somebody was saying it would taste of Tupperware if it was plastic. Yeah, that's a good point. And I'm going to show uh, Julie uh, the. She's saying beer is the most consumed by Americans rather than whiskey like indians the biggest drinker and julie was saying there oh they're coming in that quest i can't keep up with them youtube is great Pat patrick milky is saying youtube is great really enjoyed the patty review yes you've you've reviews and tastings on there specifically connor ryan is saying great great show uh jonathan mcculloch saying great show as well and we've got about Listen, the thing i will say is when i do reviews okay i do reviews well, pretty much of whiskies that people can actually buy. I see a lot of people doing whiskey reviews and it's like 28 year old 500 pound bottles that they've been gifted by such and such. I, 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 if I have been gifted a bottle, if they sent me a bottle, I let people know. Okay. Um, and I say, look, this was sent as a PR thing. I'm independent. I don't, I can do what I want. But when you see people reviewing a bottle that they've been given and it's, four or five hundred pound a bottle and it's all been snapped up um i like to review the basic entry level stuff as well so uh, I, I, do, I do something slightly different than a lot of people you know? 
Well, we'll leave it there. Uh, another great week. Uh, Julie, there is the morns for you. Uh, and uh, that's where I was. That's me walking down the hill there. And uh, <laughs> Mar you know, you need the photographic evidence to prove it because Marty's seen the Facebook Live. Uh, yeah. So he, he knows I really was there. Uh, so thanks a lot for watching again uh, this week. Do we know what we're doing next week, Marty, yet? No? Haven't a clue, Justin. Um, think of something probably about Wednesday, and then I'll cobble something, <laughs> I'll cobble something together by, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get something sorted out for about Friday, and then we'll be okay. I'll try and catch you before then. Night-night. Night-night. Take care, buddy. <laughs>